So in the study titled, quote, Paper Gamma Agonists and Their Role in Primary Psychotricial Alopecia, unquote, by Sarawin Harn Chuwang and Pukait Shunawanit, published in PPAR Research in 2017, provides critical insights for us to understand the role of the PPAR gamma receptor or the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, especially when it comes to the development of lichen planar pilaris and other primary psychotricial alopecias that are just derivatives of lichen planar pilaris. To once again explain the PPAR gamma receptor's responsibility, it catches on to lipids, and then it should, with that information, it should stimulate the PPAR gamma to bind to another thing called the retinoid receptor. But if, once again, the PPAR gamma receptor isn't working, this is going to lead to lipotoxicity, where gradually, you know, lipids will begin to build up in the tissue and it becomes very toxic because your PPAR gamma receptor isn't activating enough to kind of help remove and destroy those lipids. So this fosters a very poor metabolism in the tissue. And once again, it leads to lymphocytes destroying that tissue. So I've been yapping all the time. What can we do to solve such an issue? Well, we need to take something called the PPAR gamma agonist in this case that would kind of turn on the receptor, the PPAR gamma receptor, and make it work properly. Now, if you can do this early enough in the intervention of lichen planar pilaris, you can potentially save hair follicles. You can potentially stop the spread of lichen planar pilaris, if not significantly slow it down. And then over time, you can restore lipid homeostasis and you can make the sebaceous glands kind of function properly again. And those hair follicles should be able to recover if they were kind of thinning out or dying. So the drug pioglitazone, or commonly known by the brand name Actos, A-C-T-O-S, this drug has been noted in the literature to help reduce inflammation when it comes to lichen planar pilaris because it activates the PPAR gamma receptor. Now, keep in mind, pioglitazone and other PPAR gamma receptor agonists are primarily diabetes drugs that are used to improve insulin sensitivity and regulate blood sugar levels in patients with type 2 diabetes. They are usually prescribed when patients have not adequately responded to other diabetes medications such as metformin or sulfonylureas. These drugs help activate the PPAR gamma receptor, which plays a crucial role in glucose metabolism and fat storage, ultimately enhancing the body's response to insulin. But I also want to think here, could metformin or sulfonylureas also be helpful when it comes to scarring alopecias? What about other diabetes drugs? Could they also be explored in a dermatological case for lipid production and lipid metabolism? Because there's also other studies that show that the use of metformin can help with scarring alopecias. Now, we can look at several studies here. Mamorani and Karnik 2009. This case report involved a single patient with lichen planar pilaris treated with oral pioglitazone at a dose of 15 milligrams per day for 14 months, and the patient showed clinical improvements within two months and a marked decrease in inflammation after six months and also remained symptom-free for a year after just, you know, using the drug for a course of 14 months. That's pretty impressive. The next study that we can look at is Biber Genova and Walsh 2012, and this is a case series which included 21 patients with lichen planar pilaris, two patients with fibrosing alopecia in a pattern distribution, and one patient with frontal fibrosing alopecia. The patients received oral pioglitazone hydrochloride at a starting dose of 15 milligrams per day, which could be increased to 30 milligrams a day if there were no adverse drug reactions. Five patients achieved full remission, 12 showed improvement, and three had no improvement, unfortunately, and four actually experienced adverse reactions leading to withdrawal from the study. And these reactions were mild. They included left calf pain, lightheadedness, and nausea, dizziness, hives, so it wasn't anything deadly, but nevertheless, possibly uncomfortable. So remember, you know, this is a diabetes drug, so if you ever do get on it with your doctor, try to monitor your blood sugar levels. If you don't even have type 2 diabetes, it's not a good idea to just go into this blindly because you could induce a state of hypoglycemia. Anyway, the next study being Spring et al. 2013. This study involved 22 patients treated with 
oral pioglitazone hydrochloride at 15 mg per day for one year. Three patients showed remission with no relapse, so they actually stopped taking the drug and they, you know, didn't have any further signs of lichen planus pilaris. They actually had improvements from the drug. Five had improvements with lower disease activity, so they were able to reverse the hair loss, but they still had signs of lichen planus pilaris. And four experienced improvement but had relapses, and then they had negative results. So we had four people who were actually getting results from using pioglitazone, but then when they stopped, they kind of relapsed and then they had further hair loss. Finally, we have Mesinkovska et al. 2015. And this is a retrospective case series which included 18 patients with lichen planus pilaris and four patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Patients received oral pioglitazone hydrochloride at a dose of 15 mg per day for a median of 10.5 months. 16 patients showed marked improvements, 5 had stable disease, and one had disease progression, meaning they kind of got worse even being on treatment. Just one person though, right? So maybe in that case, the person would probably have to increase their oral pioglitazone intake to probably like 30 milligrams a day, going as high as 50 milligrams per day. But again, you know, if you're just listening to me saying this, don't try this on yourself, go to a doctor and get monitored because there were some adverse reactions in this study, right? And this included lower extremity edema, so they had fluid buildup in their lower extremities, some weight gain, right? So pioglitazone actually increases your glycogen, so it stores the glycogen, right, into your fat. So this is obviously going to make you gain weight. And then there was a resistant hypertension that could or maybe probably doesn't have anything to do with the drug itself directly, but it could, it very well, it very well could, so this is why you should be monitored. But for the most part, in the body of the literature, it seems oral pioglitazone is safe. Now, there are some controversies out there where they say, oh, well, this thing can potentially cause, you know, um, bladder cancer, right? To my knowledge, from what I can see, it only involved rats at a very high dose. And in the studies where it was noted that, oh, pioglitazone is causing cancer, it involved very old people, people who were type 2 diabetic, and those those people in and of themselves, they already had a higher, you know, likelihood of developing that kind of bladder cancer, right? So it doesn't necessarily implicate oral pioglitazone to bladder cancer. But that being said, maybe in the future, there could be some sort of experimentation with topical pioglitazone to help people, right? Because we do have topical metformin for other alopecia conditions that are related to lichen planus pilaris. In fact, um, we can look at some case reports of topical metformin being used to treat central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, also known as CCCA. One study titled, quote, topical metformin for the treatment of CCCA, unquote, by Ola Olua et al., presents two cases of hair regrowth after the use of topical metformin for CCCA. The study highlights that CCCA is a progressive scarring alopecia predominantly occurring in women of African descent. Metformin, commonly used for glycemic control in type 2 diabetes, has shown efficacy in improving fibrosis in fibroproliferative disorders through the activation of adenosine monophosphate-activated protein kinase, also known as AMPK. The patients in this study experienced substantial hair regrowth after topical applications of 10% metformin cream over several months. So my question is, why are these type 2 diabetes drugs having some success in scarring alopecias? Well, both the PPAR gamma receptor agonist and metformin have significant anti-inflammatory effects. Chronic inflammation is a key factor in the pathogenesis of scarring alopecia, like lichen planus pilaris and its variant CCCA. Therefore, any drug that can effectively reduce inflammation may help prevent further follicular damage and scarring. However, this might be a secondary benefit, because the primary issue here seems to be the dysfunction of the sebaceous glands and various sebocytes. The inability of their PPAR gamma receptors to kind of actually do their job and break down the lipids in the skin causes for there to be a toxic buildup of lipids, right? This lipotoxicity in the tissue. 
PPAR gamma agonists like pioglitazone play a crucial role in lipid metabolism and homeostasis because they actually turn on the PPAR gamma by agonizing it, right? When you agonize something, you're, you're kind of making it more active. You're, you're essentially telling the receptor, hey, do your fucking job. Go back to breaking down those lipids. In the case of the PPAR gamma receptor, that's what the medication pioglitazone is telling it to do. In scarring alopecias, disrupted lipid metabolism can contribute to the pathological process. So, by improving lipid metabolism, PPAR gamma agonists like pioglitazone may help restore the normal functions of the sebaceous glands and their hair follicles by reactivating PPAR gamma receptors activity and thus, from there, increasing the metabolism of the local lipids and essentially cleaning out the toxic lipids and reducing the inflammatory response from your body's lymphocytes. On the other hand, metformin helps with lipid metabolism primarily through its activation of adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase or AMPK. AMPK activation by metformin inhibits the synthesis of fatty acids and cholesterol by downregulating the expression of enzymes involved in lipogenesis, such as acetyl-CoA, carboxylase, and fatty acid synthase. And this in and of itself helps reduce the accumulation of lipids in cells. So it's actually fighting the buildup of this sort of lipotoxicity in its own right. So maybe there could be a case here to use a oral pioglitazone along with a topical metformin, or maybe a topical compound of metformin and pioglitazone at the same time, right? That could help people with lichen planta pilaris. Now, I wouldn't use both oral metformin and oral pioglitazone because, again, these things both affect blood sugar, so using it at the same time can really, really impact your blood sugar levels and make them drop dangerously low. So don't play with that, especially if you don't even have type 2 diabetes. Again, go to a doctor. I think it would be possibly better, just my opinion, not a doctor here, but I think it would be possibly better to just use one at a time, so maybe oral pioglitazone first, and then maybe thinking about putting on topical metformin on the scalp, or maybe somehow getting a compounded version of, you know, of a pioglitazone solution that you can put on your scalp, and then you can take oral metformin, or realistically just probably using both of them on your scalp. But I think it's more accessible for people to just get oral pioglitazone or oral metformin. But looking at the wealth of the literature, it seems like Oral pioglitazone would be the first intervention in dealing with lichen planta pilaris, at least in an effective sort of setting.